so yesterday we discuss about the basic concept of the networking then we'll discuss about cables topology osi reference model tcp ip model after that we discuss about ip addressing in ip addressing we discuss about subnetting supernetting and vlsm first it tell me is there any issue in subnetting supernetting and vlsm that is very important because there will be three question in the exam and those are very tricky questions so today i will show you like what kind of questions will be there is there any issue you want to revise anything an no. example i i think uh if the labs have pretty close to what the test have and there's some practice stuff where i think Kirk and i discussed afterwards after you got off yesterday that the supernetting and the subnetting it's it's basically you know like you said tricky math but yes. with a little bit of practice i think we'll get it right you know as long as we you know take our time and figure it out do you agree Kirk? Yeah, it's just a matter of remembering what formula you use for which part. <laughs> yes. Yeah, repetition. Okay. After that, we discuss about the IOs. In IOs, we discuss about like uh, what is IOs, the router components. Then we discuss about the memories, front panel of the router. Then the basic commands. In the basic command, we make a simple network. In that simple network, we assign IP address to the interfaces and we verify like ip address is assigned to the router and you are able to communicate between routers directly connected routers right so today we are going to discuss about next thing now the next topic is how many ways to access a device. Also, Rakesh, did, did you send us the PNG files yesterday? Because neither yeah, one. Yeah, I sent on your email. You received a mail from uh, vtransfer.com. No, Please we didn't. Say. I didn't get that. Correct, Daniel. You haven't received that email. No, I did not get that email. Uh, check in your spam. You will get an email from vtransfer.com. I sent you yesterday only. Not issue. I will send once again. Okay. How many ways to access a device console? So we have first option through console. We can access router switches, firewall through the console port. Any other option? Any idea? VPN. VPN, no. Hurry. In 40, we have an option. You can access SSH. through Telnet. Yes. Telnet, SSH, then we have an option through aux port, auxiliary port, then we have an option we can access through GUI and when we access through GUI, HTTP and HTTPS. So these are the five options through which you can access a device. Is the aux port also the management port? Yes, but in the aux port, I will show you the connectivity. On aux port, firstly, the modem will connect. On modem, there is a public IP address. We will access the public IP and public IP, and through that public IP, we will access to the device. Okay, but here we cannot show the aux port practical because right now we don't have that type of connectivity, and no one is using that aux port. Right now, if you purchase the new devices, you will get instead of aux port you are getting the management port into the device okay if we have these five ways to access the device and if we want to secure the device so we have to put security on all these options right so first option is 
how to implement console port security now console port security means let's suppose this is your router and this is the pc and someone is accessing this router through console port so when this pc is accessing this device through the console port i want firstly now whenever you access you, you will directly reach to this prompt right i want firstly it ask password or username password so if any user is giving the correct username and password then he will get this prompt otherwise no clear the concept any issue in that okay so how to implement this thing let's say this is my r1 you have go to the config mode type here line console 0 0 is for directly connected user after that you have to define a password password can be anything for example 1234 this 1234 is my password the next one is login and exit now whenever you are putting any kind of authentication so there are two type of authentication either you can give only the password authentication or you can give username and password so this is password authentication so whenever user try to log in through the console port firstly it will be giving the prompt of password if the user is giving the correct password then only he will able to access the router enable mode otherwise no clear this thing any question so that's basically just the root account right yes now if you press one more exit you will be out of this box means router console and firstly it will ask password so if you give password 1 2 3 4 then only you are able to access this prompt otherwise no clear this thing same thing if you want to implement username and password authentication so firstly you have to create a username so username is the command and after that you can give any username so let's say crick is the username then you have to define privilege how many right this crick user is having so by default you can define here either privilege 0 or you can define privilege 15 if you define privilege 0 that means the view only right and 15 is full right administrative rights then you have to define 
password and let's say here my password is 123 so this is the command to create the username and password after that line console 0 inside that you have to define login local and exit now if the user try to log in through the console port it will ask the username and password if it is giving the username correct and the password 1 2 3 then only user will able to access r1 console clear this thing so is there still a root account or is it over writing the root account with a user account uh, your voice is not clear is there still a root account as well or is it just now the user account it said like it like a root account okay let's verify this thing uh stop sharing i guess my question is are you renaming the root account to a username or is are you creating a new account uh click your voice is not clear here he's a, he's asking are you overriding the root account or are you making a no, no 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 we are create we are creating a new user account click i will show you that thing okay open that packet tracer and share your screen anyone click or daniel share your screen and open the packet tracer once let me show you this practical first daniel share your screen select any router take 26 20xm second last yeah okay click on the router and go to the cli okay right now you are accessing the router console no okay you are directly able to access the console right now so now type here enable config team config space t then line console 0 enter define a password no firstly password command password and then password enter login enter exit exit from there enter and save this configuration copy run start enter so now till uh, we are just setting the password authentication right now so type exit from here enter see it is asking firstly password that means it is asking that console port security password so what is your password type here now you are able to log in
Can you list the root and the user password that we just set up? Root password, root user. See, there is no concept of the root user here in the routers. Okay. Okay, type here enable. Enter. Config T and then line console zero. Here define no password. No space password. And enter. No login. Enter. Okay. Exit from there. Okay. So we tested password authentication. Now we are going to test username and password authentication. So create a username here. Username. Name of the user. Space privilege. Fifteen space password and whatever password you want to give. Uh, privilege, uh, I think spelling is mistake. Privilege. You just remove this thing and uh, type priv only. Otherwise, press tab. Enter. So you don't spell out privilege. P R I V I L E G E. Okay, press enter, it will work. Enter. Now you create a username. The name of the user is D Gates, and the privilege is 15, and the password is 1234. So now, again, go to the line console zero. Yes. And define here login local. Login local. Enter. And exit. Exit. Now this login local represent, you have to use the username and password. And that username and password is created on locally on the device. Exit from there. One more exit. Enter now. So now it is asking the username and password. No, you gave D gates. Username is D gates. Clear now? Any confusion here? No, that's clear. I mean, basic setting up a account to, for console login, right? Yeah. Uh, Daniel, stop sharing. Hey, before you save that, can you add the definition of the difference between privilege zero and privilege 15 to that little? Sure. Thing? Oh. Sure, sure, sure.
okay privilege 1 to 14 you can configure but you can configure through authentication server we have some authentication server for example radius server and takas server okay you have to configure that radius and takas server there you can create a privilege level let's say one and in that privilege level one you can define certain commands so you can attach that privilege level to any user so that can be done only through the radius server or takas server so let me write here privilege 1 to 14 can be configured through external authentication server like acs acs is access control server in that access control server you have to configure two protocol basically radius server and takas server so there you can do the profiling of the user and you can attach that profile to the user next excellent report security and just for your knowledge uh in my jump folder or anything i did not receive that email for the pnd files from yesterday so you will need to resend those
not showing here. Okay, not issue. I will share that thing once again. Just a second. Let me. Okay, I'm sharing uh, day one, all the snapshot through this Zoom chat. Please check, have you received that thing? In our chat, have you received day one snapshots? Auxiliary port security now. Ox port security. Ox port security is like this. Let's say this is your router. Through the router, you are connecting a modem. And this is the user. So there will be a public IP address here. So we'll, you will access this public IP address and through that public IP, you will able to access this router R1. 
this port is ox so now if you implement the ox port security same thing you have to go to the router line aux again zero login that's a login log file next it you need a username and password also username pick privilege 15 and password 23 clear this thing if someone try to access your device through the aux port in that case he will get the username and password prompt first next one is telnet now what is telnet ssh right no telnet is different ssh is different what is telnet telnet protocol telnet is used to access a device remotely through cli telnet username and password will be in clear text form so when you configure telnet and if you try to access any device through telnet so remember one thing the username and password will be in clear text form so telnet is not secure telnet work on port number 23 now how to configure telnet so i have a question yes um seeing as telnet is not enabled by the phone uh you're breaking up sir your voice is not clear Yes, Krik. Ask question. Hmm. In the telnet is not secure. Is it disabled by default? No. Telnet is enabled, but you have to configure that thing. the service is enabled on the routers so if you remember yesterday we done this task r1 and r2 here i define dot 1 ip here i define dot 2 and the network is 12.0.0.0/8 slash it can be disabled yes we can disable it so let's say we configured this thing and r1 and r2 they are able to communicate right now so we have to implement telnet so remember one thing 
to access telnet ssh and http first thing tcp ip must be fine means there should be communication then only you are able to access the device remotely so let's say you are configuring telnet on r1 so on r1 you have to create a username username the name of the user privilege 15 and password is 123 after that you have to define line vty 0 space 4 0 space 4 means five user can access a device simultaneously this 0 to 4 this value can be changed and how much is that value that depend on the ios version so if you have the latest ios version it can be 64 it can be 128 it can be 256 again that value depend on the ios version and what is the services into the ios inside that you have to define login local and exit how to verify this thing you have to go to the r2 and you will simply type telnet and ip address of r1 so once you enter this it will ask username and password so if you give the username and password then you are able to access the device and you can do everything because you have privilege 15 clear this thing any issue any question here did you did you see that kirk asked another sorry Kirk asked another question. Can it be disabled? To disable that service, like okay, you have to type like okay, line VTY, no login. That service will be disabled because we cannot disable that thing permanently because some services are by default enabled into the iOS. next one is ssh now ssh is used again to access a device remotely through cli ssh username and password is into the encrypted form by default ssh is known as secure shell
used to access device remotely to CLI. As a search, username and password. will be in clear text form sorry encrypted form SSH work on port number 22. How to configure SSH? Again, you need a username and password. Then for the SSH, you have to define a domain name. IP space domain name. And domain name can be anything. For example, your company name then you have to define encryption. So for that you have to define crypto key generate RSA. RSA is a security algorithm to encrypt your username and password. So once you enter this thing, it will give you a message. How much strong is your encryption key? So by default, there will be 512. So here you have to give 1024. You can give any value. You can give 512. You can give 1024. You can give 2048. Okay. So remember one thing, if you are putting strong encryption, in that case, it will consume more memory resource and more CPU utilization. After that, line VTY04 login local transport input SSH. So if you run this command transport input SSH, so these virtual line will be disabled for the telnet and only SSH will work now. Clear this thing. Any question? Rick, Daniel, any question here? No, none at this time. Okay, so let's do this practical first. Have you remember all the commands, whatever we done yesterday, like how to assign IP address and all? I won't be able to just throw them out off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, so do one thing, Daniel, again, share your screen. Okay, 
do one thing uh, connect two routers take two routers and we have to assign ip address to those two routers it doesn't matter like uh, model must be same no you can connect any model so firstly power of uh, firstly connect the cable between the devices connect the cable yes this one take the first cable automatic cable this port will not connect because right now on the router there is no serial ports there is only fast ethernet port yeah so you can connect router to router fast ethernet they are the same devices that's why the cable is cross cable so this time you have to configure ip address on the fast ethernet go to this router yes r1 go to the config mode no 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 cli <coughs> we can configure ip address from there also so yeah config t interface fast ethernet 0 by 0 IP space address. You have to define IP address. IP space address. Then let's say twelve dot zero dot zero dot one space twelve dot zero dot zero dot one and then subnet mask. Twelve dot zero dot zero dot one. Sorry. What do you want the IP address to be? Twelve dot zero dot zero dot one. Space two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero. Enter. And no shutdown. No shutdown is a single word. Okay. Okay. Now exit from there. Define a host name here. Exit. And host name. Define any host name. No, no, no. Host name. You have to define a name. Okay. Enter. Okay. Run one more command. Banner. B a double n e r. Banner. Space motted m o t d. space use any special symbol for example like dollar dollar sign you can type any message here so if someone will access this device so firstly that message will be print any message you can give here close the message with the same symbol space again dollar sign enter so we define the ip address we define the banner space motted now on this router we are defining the telnet now so line vty line space vty vty space 0 space 4 enter password and whatever password you want to give enter login exit go to another router and define ip address 
no Firstly, you have to enter into the interface. Interface fast Ethernet zero by zero. Then define IP address. No, IP address should be twelve because on another end we define twelve. Space two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero. No shit. Do you want to give us the house name? We'll define later uh, into config mode. No shit down here. Exit. Define host name here. Host name. Host name is the config mode command. Okay. Enter. So we define everything. So exit from there. Now enter. So we define telnet on the first router. So we have to test that thing. So before telnet, check are you able to communicate that router. So firstly ping 12.0.1 you are able to communicate right it is showing success rate is 100% now okay now you have to access the telnet r1 so telnet type telnet T E L N E T space IP address of the remote device so twelve dot zero dot one enter what password you gave inside the telnet enter I think so one two three four you gave one two three Okay. See on so, the first router. So I, I, I got that to work and when I did the password now it's showing HN test as the prompt. Right. So check which password is there on first router. How do I test that? Minimize this thing and uh, click on that first router. Which one, two, three, four password you give there. Try once again. Telnet. 12.0.1 space 12.0.1. Enter. One two three four. Okay. <clears throat> clear this thing. Yeah, it's clear. And you can see your message is also there. Open testing for the host name naming. Type here enable. You will not able to log in, right? Why you are not able to log in? That is our next topic. Enable port security. Enable mode security. We'll discuss that thing. Okay. Exit from there. Okay. So telnet is verified. Now we are testing SSH. So for the SSH, configure SSH on this router and we'll try to access SSH through first router. 
So for the telnet uh, SSH, go to the config mode. Config mode, not here. Into CLI, CLI, CLI. Config T. Create a username here. <clears throat> username, name of the user. Space privilege. No, P R I V L A G E. Okay, priv. You can type. You can tab. Use tab. Okay, space fifteen. Space password and whatever password you want to give. Enter. So you create a username D Gates privilege is fifteen, and the password is one two three four. So now we have to enable the SSH. So type here space domain hyphen name IP space domain IP space domain hyphen name space any name whatever name you want to give. Give any name. Enter. Next command is crypto space key generate key what key generate key space generate generate. I am not understanding what you're saying. Okay, generate, G E N E R A T E, generate. You can use tab. R S A, R S A. Enter. So as I told you, R S A is a security algorithm. It is showing the name of the key will be H N test or two dot D N test, whatever name you give, domain name, and the key encryption key how much strong is your encryption key that can be 362 4 2048 bit so by default it is 512 bit stronger so here you can give 1024 1024 enter So you are getting that message generating the one thousand twenty-four bit RSA keys means your encryption will be that much strong. Now after that line VTY is zero space four line VTY. You have to type line space VTY. Remove zero space four first. Zero four space line space VTY. No no no. Firstly, line space VTY. Zero space four will be at the end. Now yes, line VTY. Oh my goodness. Hello, Lizzie. Zero space four. Enter. Login local. Then transport input SSH. Enter. Exit from there. Firstly, check which uh, username you created. D gate, right? Yes. Okay. Now go to the first router.
enter so type here no 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 type here ssh space hyphen l space name of the user whatever user you created there space ip address 12.2 enter it is asking for the password clear this thing yeah i'm not going to remember all those commands but yeah <laughs> see uh, it require practice well yeah and then actual actual using it in a real world scenario over and over again yes so what are the things you configure uh, like on your devices like on cisco devices well i mean our cisco devices have been been configured for quite some time so okay we're not reconfiguring our devices every day so so whatever topics we done any issue in that everything is clear yeah i think so yes great any issue Crick, we are not getting your voice. Uh, I do have one question. Yes. Uh, for the line VTY command, why did we yes. use zero four instead of zero fifteen? Okay. See, it's uh, sometimes there is a requirement. Uh, two or three users are simultaneously connecting to that device to configure something. So zero to four, that is the by default configuration. means five user can access a device simultaneously in the new ios they are giving them functionality they increase the number of user to access the device so it depend which ios version you have so let's say let me show you uh, go to the config t daniel go to config t here type line vty space 0 and then question mark space question mark you can see here it is allowing till 15 1 to 15 0 is for the directly connected user and 15 is the maximum value but if you go in like 15.x ios right now i think so in this router we have 12. Four or twelve or two IOs. Uh, clear this thing. Exit from there. No, no, no. Exit from there. Yes. Type here show version. And check what is the version of that IOs. Show version. Ah. Uh, Fifteen dot one. Here twelve dot one. That's why we are getting twelve dot. Uh, sorry, maximum line fifteen. If you have fifteen dot x or like fifteen dot two, fifteen dot six, in that case you will get the number of lines are increased. Clear this thing now. Yes, Crick. It's clear now. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
then you'll stop sharing HTTP and HTTPS. Means if you want to access the device through GUI, okay. This topic is not into the CCNA. This topic is into the CCNA security. But only three commands are there. I am going to explain that thing. Let's say this is the device, and there is a PC. You want to access this device. Let's say here my IP is. Ten dot zero dot zero dot one. Let's say ten dot zero dot zero dot ten. If you want to access this device through GUI here on this system, so you need certain softwares. So that software name is CCP, Cisco Configuration Professional, or SDM, Security Device Manager. These two softwares. are required either you have ccp cisco configuration professional or sdm so you have to configure http or https here so on r1 again you need a username after that ip http server if you define ip http server http protocol will be enabled so you can access this device through http protocol if you want to access through https ip http secure hyphen server after that ip http authentication local and exit these are the commands
Daniel, share your screen. Open that uh, Cisco Labs. Continue lab one. Now click on the router. Enter. Okay, close this console. Click on the switch one. Enter. Okay. Close this thing. Open a new browser, new tab. Okay. Go to the Google, Google.com, and type here "putty." Download "putty." Go to this first link here. Yeah. Uh, you click here. You can download Putty here. Click on here. Yeah. Hey Daniel, just FYI, Putty is not authorized on my workstation. And download this thing, 64-bit installer. Putty 64-bit installer. Second option. Yeah, Kirk, I uh, interesting. I guess so. Say something. Yeah, this one. Hey, Rakesh. Yes. Um, our IT security does not allow us to install PuTTY on our workstations. Oh. Then how you will access the lab? In that case, what I can do, uh, I can share my screen and you can do in my system in that case. Yes, Craig, Daniel. Yes. So what I will do once I will discuss the topic and after that I will share my screen, you log in, uh, I will give my control, my system control. You log in with your credential and perform the activity. Is it fine with you? But at a time only one user will able to do that task. So it will be like this half of the lab Daniel will do half of the lab Crick will do. Is it fine? I'm okay just watching. That's fine. Okay. Cool. So let me discuss the next topic. After that, we'll do the labs. The next thing is, enable mode security.
enable mode security means when you access the device you are here and you are typing enable once you enable you will reach here if you want to configure anything at least you should be into the privilege mode then you can go to the config mode you cannot jump directly enable to config so i want password between enable and privilege mode here yeah. the console port security is here the console port security password is here enable port security is here so when we discuss about enable mode security there are two type of enable mode security one is enable password one is enable secret password now enable password is in clear text form enable secret password is encrypted form so if you want to configure enable port security so you have to write this command enable then password and whatever password you want to give for example 123 if you want to configure enable secret then enable secret 123 these are the command one more important command if you want to encrypt all the password all the text password so there is a command service space password encryption remember this command this is in your exam used to encrypt all your text password remember this thing hey daniel really quick i would recommend exiting out of that lab if you haven't so your time doesn't keep going yes uh, if the lab is not working then stop that timer otherwise gotcha so this enable mode security is done any issue in that Is Craig Daniel any question here? No, no, it's just. So this is done. next topic is cdp and lldp 
CDP and LLDP. CDP is Cisco Discovery Protocol. LLDP is Link Layer Discovery Protocol. used to discover CDP is Cisco proprietary protocol Proprietary protocol means it will work only on the Cisco router. CDP is by default enable. CDP hello time 60 second and Hold down time one eighty second. So CDP is by default enable. Let's say, and this CDP is by default enable on router switches firewall. If you want to disable it, so let's say I'm taking example of the router. So if you want to disable it, no CDP run. So that, this command will disable the CDP. If you want to again enable the CDP, CDP run. Let us assume you want to enable the CDP on the particular interface. In that case, what you can do, you can go to the interface, let's say fast ethernet zero by zero, and you can run. CDP enable exit like this way. Now CDP is Cisco proprietary. So if in your data center you have all the Cisco devices, in that case you can discover the devices through CDP, and the command will be on. You can run the command show CDP and show CDP neighbor. Next one is LLDP. Link layer discovery protocol. Link layer discovery protocol. LLDP is used to discover directly connected device. LLDP is open standard. LLDP is open standard protocol. It will work on all kind of vendors: Cisco, HP, Juniper, Dell. LLDP is by default disable.
so if you want to enable lldp you can run lldp space run you have to run lldp on all the devices and after that you can check with show lldp show lldp neighbor detail so these are the commands Daniel, uh, send a request for control. Uh, hold on, just a second. I think we may be able to uh, download Putty. We we may have found a workaround. Okay, try that one. Kirk, you there? Yeah, what's up? Which version? Uh, well, that's what you have to look and see which version of Windows 10 you're running to know which software page to go to to download it. Yeah, I don't know that version. The 1703, where'd I find that information? I've never seen that V seven four digit number before. Hey, can you hear me, Daniel? Yep. Okay, so uh, click on your on your Windows icon to open the Start menu. Yeah. And then type the word About. Okay. And you should see an option for About this PC. Got it. Click on that, and then it'll have underneath the Windows 10, like the third thing down, it'll say Version. Got it. Okay. And then now you know which software page to go to. Okay. This is a software that I can download through the e-tags for my PC. I 
as long as it's uh yes as long as it's on that page it should be covered okay but paul told me that putty is still supported on etads okay i'm looking for it oh there it is Wait a minute. Can you not download it from this website? Or is it just telling you that it is? Okay. All right, so uh, uh, Rakesh, we have, Rakesh, we have, um, I have Putty downloaded. Okay. Now uh, you install that putty and uh, check uh, it's working now. Let's see. Putty will not work. Putty installer you have to install. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Daniel. Yeah. Where did you download it? Well, I, I downloaded the version that was from the PuTTY site, and it's the .70, just like they have on the website. Okay. Because I can't get it from that ETADS website. It's just a loop. When I click on it, it actually takes me back to the first page. Yeah, I was noticing that. But it's the same version, the dot point. Point seventy that they list on the list. Putty CAC dot seventy secure shell. So I was about to download it from where I I was gonna install it from where I downloaded it. Did you download the MSI or the EXE file? MSI. Is that the one we want? I don't know. I was just curious which one you got. Oh, okay. Worst thing that happens, they make me re remove it. Okay, Rakesh, you want me to now retry after uh, downloading that? Yes. Have you installed that uh, installer? Yeah, give me a second. Let me see. Yeah, so I've putty install. Let me go back to here. Like it's the same result. Okay. 
Unless once again, it needs a reboot. So Daniel, I tried to um, automatically choose the application, or sorry, I tried to manually choose the application to PuTTY to connect, like when you click on the server. I heard the first part of what you said, but it's like you so turned your- I, I, When you click on the server and it says, you know, use SSH Telnet, or then you can choose an application. Oh, okay. I went in and chose, I down to the C program files, you know, found PuTTY, and it opened the connection with PuTTY, but then it timed out because it's trying to use Telnet, and I think we can only use PuTTY for SSH. Oh. Okay. Rakesh, how do you want to move forward? Yeah, when I try to open the uh, anything inside the lab, it sits there and then it gets a, a fatal error that connection timed out with Putty. Yeah, I'm thinking he stepped away.
yes daniel issue is resolved or still we are on the same phase no we're still having the same issue it's it's not working even when you tell it to use buddy okay so it's your internal security issue uh i don't think so I think i'm i'm getting a uh the connection timed out when I try and open anything with Buddy through the lab. Okay, you do one thing. Uh, you try and uh, your username and password in my system. You take access of this system. Let's see. Is there issue in your uh, like account or like in your system? Let me see that thing. Try to log in in my system. Trying to figure out how I request. Are you able to see the screen? I think so. Yeah, somewhere you will that. get uh, remote uh, control option. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Enter your username and password and try to log in. Okay, in this system, there is no Cisco installer. So firstly, you have to download that thing. So click on first download Cisco installer. Save this file. Yes, install that thing. I can't see it. Did it finish? Yeah, it's finished. Click on the lab, continue lab. Yes, open link. See, ours doesn't do that. It's working here. Yeah, see, ours does not give us that option that you just had, though. No, actually, this is the difference in the operating system. Here, the operating system is uh, Windows 8, and you have Windows 10. Yeah, but when ours does not come up and say open link, ours directly just opens up straight to the terminal. No, Daniel, mine comes up with that. It says open link, and then I chose to manually use PuTTY uh, instead see. of the default. And when I did PuTTY, it opened the window, but then it gave me, like, it actually had an IP address it was looking for, but then it errored out. It timed out. Yeah, see, mine doesn't do that. When I double-click on the, the, uh, the router itself, it opens directly in. Okay, try one more thing. Uh... In our operating system now, Windows uh, firewall is enabled by default, right? Yes. So try to disable Windows firewall and try after that. Sometime that also giving the error.
Oh, am I on your computer? Yeah. Sorry? Your own computer. Try to disable firewall. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I'm on my computer. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I don't have that. I don't have that capability. To disable the firewall? Yeah. That means the issue is with the operating system. Okay, not an issue. Um, perform this lab here right now. So enter. Hang on. Hang on just a second. I got to get back to you. So once uh, minimize this console, let me explain that thing. See, in this topology, there are these tabs, introduction, job add, procedure, manage device, and all these things. So they are giving that, this topology. Yes. I'm sorry. So does that mean that we're not going to be able to use these labs to practice? You can do all those labs. Okay. But actually, the issue is with your operating system now that OT is not working in your system right now. Okay. So either you try to change the operating system or try to access from outside your network, then maybe it will work. It's the internal issue. It's not like Cisco issue. No, I understand. So here, if you click on the procedure, you will get all the tasks, means what activity you have to perform here. Oh, and okay. They are giving step by step, step one, step two, step three, everything is there. You have to follow these steps and you have to perform this activity. Understood. So try to complete this activity first now. Now, control is in your hand now. Perform this activity fast. Fast or first? Fast. Yeah. Because uh, we had to do lots of lab today. Crick, are you with us? Crick, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, but the issue is we're going to have to build this first, right? No, no, no. Cisco predefined this topology. Cisco created this topology. It's a predefined topology. You have to perform the task. That's it. No need to build this topology. They configure IP addressing each and everything. You have to just verify that activity. Yeah, I understand that while I'm in your machine. I'm talking about on my machine. In your machine, uh, if you want I'm to using, build this. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to have to build these prior to doing these labs, correct? If you are using that Cisco packet tracer, then you have to build. Otherwise, right. if, you, if you access directly this lab in your system, then there is no need. Understood. So what I'm trying to explain is, is that we have to build all these labs prior to while we're learning this. So right. it's going to be very difficult to build these when we don't know how to do it because we're trying to learn it. Right. I'm going to, hold on, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try to disconnect my VPN. See if that makes a difference. Stand by.
Okay, so it's my VPN that's causing it. Now it's working fine in your system. Yeah, hold on a second. I'll. This this is. Can you see this? No, actually, uh, you are accessing my machine now. Oh yeah, that's right. Stop. Uh, okay. Kick me off and let me share. Yes, now it's working fine. Okay, hey Kurt. It's your VPN issue. Yeah. Craig, are you getting this thing? Well, he's not going, he's not VPN. He's actually at the office. Okay. So perform this uh, activity first, discovery one. Go with the procedure, complete all the tasks. And once it's done, then let me know, okay? Then we'll perform the another activity. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me... Don't need this. Don't need this. All right.
Daniel, are you doing the lab? Yes. Okay. It's quite long. Yeah.
Kesh, what we're doing here is basically what we've done already in the uh, previous stuff, right? Right. Okay. So that is done. Uh, just a second. Kirk, did you get yours to work? No, but I just read through all the instructions. Yeah, I wonder if you jump on the Wi-Fi and just don't VPN if that'll work. Because the moment I turned my VPN off, it worked. Yeah, the only problem is I don't have Wi-Fi in my office. Yeah, it may not be enough connection. Discovery one is completed, Daniel. Yeah, I'm good with that. We're I'm good with that lab. I mean, we've kind of beat that to death. So there is one more discovery. Discovery number seven. Number seven. Try to complete. Yeah, discovery number seven. Try to complete this discovery. It's a CDP. Whatever we are discussing, CDP and LLDP. It's a CDP discovery. So try to complete this lab. Yes, Craig. I said, what lab are you having? Craig, uh, your voice is not clear.
Rakesh, I'm having issues with uh, Discovery 7. Okay, share your screen. So when I click this switch, like it tells me here, on switch one, enter the following command. Mm -hmm. Did it immediately go away. Uh, have you connected again with the VPN? No. It's off. It should not be issue again. Okay, show me that picture, complete, complete picture. Routers are there. Huh? There are some routers, right? Click on the router, R1. How you connect previously? Uh, just like this. So if I close this, here, I'll exit this one. See, this one worked just fine. This is working fine. That's a router. Here's a switch. Exit from there. Click on discovery number two, start the lab, discovery two. That yes. Exit from there. Try another discovery. Let's say discovery number six. Now click on the discovery number seven. Also, am I still logged in under you, or did you log me off so it's not running time? There you go. All right. Maybe it's just confusing.
Okay. Working fine? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you're showing the details of the, what they call neighbors, I guess? Yes. And neighbors can be multiple, well, I guess it would be your original switch and router yeah. on the same. In the neighbor, basically you will get the directly connected devices. Okay. Great. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So now we are going to start routing. Hey, before you start that, can we take a five minute ba bathroom break? Sure. Okay. Five minutes.
ओके राउटिंग राउटिंग इज ए प्रोसेस कम्युनिकेट between two or more ip subnets for example we have these two routers r1 and r2 between r1 and r2 there is a 12 network on r1 lan we have network 10 and on r2 we have network 20 so if you are sitting here and if you want to communicate to this guy from a to b you will not able to communicate in the default condition because your traffic will move through router and router don't know how to forward the packet to the 20 so on r1 and r2 you have to perform routing So routing is a process to communicate between two or more different IP subnets. Types of routing. So we have static route. We have default route or default routing, and we have dynamic routing. under dynamic routing we have two categories one is igp and one is egp we'll discuss that thing <clears throat> so firstly we'll discuss static route in static route or in static routing you have to give complete information about destination complete information about destination means you have to give destination network id you have to give subnet mask and you have to give default gateway these information static routing provide security security in which sense if you are not putting any route to the destination that particular destination will not able to communicate routing table will be short consume less memory resource and less cpu utilization static routing is not suitable in large organization because if you have let's say 1000 number of routes so manually you have to put the 1000 route and if something is change so you have to change on all the routers
can be used as backup link of dynamic routing. So let's take an example. If you configure static route, so in the static route, you have to identify who is your destination. So let's say you are on R1. C means directly connected and D means your destination. So tell me one thing on R1, how many networks are directly connected? How many subnets are directly connected to the R1? Yes, Daniel. Craig? Two. Two. Which one? Yeah, two. 10 and 12, right? Uh, so the destination is that network which is not directly connected with me. So 20. Yes. Any question? The dot one, is that, are those not subnetted? That is the IP address. Let's say 12.u.1, 12.u.2. Okay. If you are on R2, in that case, 12 and 20 is directly connected and destination is 10, right? So R1. If you are on R1, there is a, uh, let me write first thing, uh, the syntax. So syntax is IP route then you have to give destination network. Then you have to give subnet mask and you have to give default gateway. So let's say you are on R1. So on R1, how many destination we have? Only one. So one route you have to define. If you have 10 destination, then 10 route you have to define. IP space route is the command. Then Destination network on R1, my destination is 20. What will be the subnet mask? Let's say 255.0.0.0. And what will be the gateway? If you are here on R1, so what will be your default gateway? Yes. Trick. What will be the default gateway? It would be 10.0.0.0. No, no, no. You are on R1. Oh. If you are sitting on R1, then which one will be your gateway? You have to reach this network. So that would be the 12.0.0.0. Yes, this IP address, 12.2. If you are on R2, so what will be the route? IP space route, then 10.0.0.0, subnet mask, and the gateway will be. Oh, Rakesh, I'm sorry, I can hear Kurt's response. Why is it the dot two? I'm sorry. I, I realized what I said wrong. It's not dot zero, it's dot two, because that's the IP address that you're going to hit the other router. And so that becomes the default gateway for that subnet. Let me write one thing. Understood. Okay. Default gateway will be first next hope IP. Clear now? If you are sitting here, 
if you yes, want to reach sense. anywhere so this ip will be your first next stop ip address right that's why this is my default gateway if you are here if you are sitting on r2 if you want to move into network 10 this ip will be your first next stop ip make sense yes that makes sense sorry i just missed what he said i was just trying to confirm you writing it down there can maybe so this is your static route so for the static route there is a discovery number 10 try to perform this discovery discovery number 10 and share your screen let me know if any issue is there oh you want me to perform discovery number 10 yes perform discovery number 10 your issue is resolved like are you able to do all those labs no it's the uh the firewall on on site here i can't get through it that's why we can't connect to the terminal no matter what we do okay daniel share your screen so that we can see what you are doing So firstly, show the diagram, show the picture. Where is the diagram? Hang with me, gotta get everything set up, hold on. Yeah. So, just minimize this thing. Huh. So in this, there are two PC, PC1 and PC2. So they are going to communicate PC1 and PC2 to the server. So they have the different IP subnet. Now you have to put root on R1, R2, and R3. So perform the task. Okay. So firstly, they are going to communicate till your default gateway. So till the default gateway, everything is working fine. Type show IP route. So it is giving the default gateway information. Means you are able to reach till your default gateway, your first next hop IP address. So they're basically having us uh, ping everything that it's attached to to confirm that it can communicate. Right. So if you try to ping this thing, you will not be able to ping because that is into the different. Uh, hold on. Here they are using ping 10.1.9. So 10.1.9 is into the different IP subnet. Your IP address is 10.10.1.4. And you are going to communicate 10.1.1.9. It's in different IP subnet. So before routing, you are unable to communicate. Try to ping this IP. You will not be able to ping because right now there is no root, there is no static route. Go down. Okay, now you have to configure the route. So 
So try to enter these routes. So can you confirm this control Z? I've seen this quite a bit. Uh, there is a control button in your laptop, right? You have to press together, whole key together, control and Z. So you will be directly into the privilege mode. Huh. Otherwise you can use E and D command. Oh, okay, I see. So R1 can hear in. Can you copy this? Rakesh? Yeah, you can copy. You can select till IP address. Till IP. Yeah. You can just select and right click one. No, 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 no. Go to the R2 and simply right click. Select this one. Yeah, but I got to copy it first. I'll copy it. Once you select, that will copy automatically. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I got you. Oh, but okay, but the next hope IP is not same. I see, but it immediately runs the command if you paste. Okay, not issue. So press up arrow key and, and change IP. Okay. That's the time right? Yeah, you are able to paint.
Why does it do the 80 and then it comes back at 100? See, in the first time when you are sending the traffic, first time, it is trying to search the route. Every packet is having a lifetime. So it is searching a route and the let, uh, that life is expired of the first packet. That's why first packet is dropped and the second packet will get the route. So that's why first packet drop and the rest of four packet are reaching to the destination. The next time when you are trying to communicate, that router already knows where is the destination. That's why there is no oh, packet okay. drop. So it's learning the first time. Right. So in this lab, they are simply showing if you are not having any route to reach the particular destination, you are not able to communicate. So they are putting again one more route, IP space route, the standard 1.4 to reach that particular network. Okay, so now you're adding it. You want me to add it? Yeah. Add that one and then try to communicate. To perform this activity, uh, just a second. Oh, I'm on the wrong. No, 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 I'm on the wrong thing. That's my fault. I got it. Oh, I got it. I went down a step too soon.
There we go. Okay, now hold on. In show IP route, you are getting this capital S. So whatever routes you are getting with the capital S, those are the static routes. Clear this thing. In that static route, firstly, this 10.1.4 is your destination. Slash 30 is the subnet mask. In the bracket, you are getting one oblique zero, one slash zero. So one is your administrative distance. And zero is the metric. So it's saying that this is getting to this because of this. Uh, the meaning is you can reach 10.1.1.4 after crossing this gateway 10.1.9. Yeah, that's the avenue it's taking. Right. Okay. And the S stood for what? Capital S means static route. Static, okay. What about the C and the L? These are the directly connected networks. Okay. Capital C oh, means directly connected. Maybe they created the loopbacks. Okay. Any other question in this output? No, I think I'm good. Yes, Craig, any question? No questions from me. Okay, so next we have to do default routing. So, oh, I'm sorry, quick question. So in the, in the test, is it, they're all multiple choice? Rakesh? Okay. 
Kirk, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's not on my end. Rakesh, are you back? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I have a question. Yes. So during the test, it's all multiple choice, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so us having to remember, you know, com command lines would be a, a question of what command line to run, right? Not type. No, there's, there's also, um, it, there's multiple choice, then you also have to do exercises. Right. There will be two or three questions. Okay. So like I can tell you that thing like, okay, on which topic you will get the command line. So you can give more and more attention to that particular topic. Okay. All right. Okay. And I'm assuming so for you example, uh, in the exam, there will be access control list example will be there. You have to configure that thing. Okay. So you have to give more and more attention to the access control list, all the commands. Okay. okay. So whatever is the configuration task, then I will tell you. Okay. Understood. So our first task is we have to understand the concept because if we are able to uh, understand the concept, then only we can configure or we can troubleshoot the task. Understood. Okay. So we done here static route and let's say you done lots of command in the lab. You put multiple routes. Let's say you have a big organization in that big organization. You have thousand number of routes, thousand number of destination. In that case, can you implement static route? We can implement, but 
there will be more and more administrative work here you have to put all the route manually on all the routers right so static routing is suitable only in small network if we have big network in that case we are using dynamic routing now after static route we had dynamic routing dynamic route or dynamic routing is also a manual routing and dynamic route dynamic route no need to give complete information about destination you have to give only default gateway information you have to give only default gateway information default routing normally used with isp service provider so it's like this So let's say this is the ISP network, and here all the servers are there. For example, like Yahoo, Google, anywhere you want to reach. So in default route, let's say R one IP space route, same command. Then zero dot zero dot zero dot zero, all destination. all subnet mask let's say here dot 1 dot 2 i'm taking the same previous example right now i'm just discussing about this network if you want communication in this network so what you can do 12.0.0.2 dot 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 means you can reach in all the destination after crossing this gateway same way if you are on r2 you can put a route ip route 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and 12.0.0.1 any confusion here so in the default route you have to just give the default gateway information not complete destination network clear this thing 
Any question here? I'm sorry, say that again. In default route, the syntax is IP space route zero dot zero dot zero. This zero is the destination. This zero means this is the destination network ID, destination network. This is the subnet mask. This is the gateway, default gateway, right? You can reach any destination, any subnet mask after crossing this gateway. Same way on R2, we are putting, you can reach any destination, any subnet mask after crossing this gateway. So in dynamic routing, you have to just give the default gateway information. No need to give the destination network ID. Okay, so it's an open, it's an open tunnel back and forth. Right. Clear this thing. Let me see, there is there is no default route lab in the uh, yeah, that's fine. That's pretty straightforward actually. Okay. Now dynamic routing dynamic routing dynamic routing is done with the help of dynamic routing protocol. Any idea about routing protocol? Okay, what is protocol? I'm not even going to begin the guess. Protocol are basically set of rule and regulation, which are used into the communication. So there are two type of protocol. One is the routed protocol. One is the routing protocol. Routed protocol are used to transport your data. Let me write here. Protocol are basically two types routed and routing. So routed protocol are used to transport your data. For example, TCP IP. This protocol is used to transport your data. And routing protocol are used to provide communication. For example, like RIP EIGRP protocol. Clear this difference. Let me give you one more basic example. In previous task, you implement static route. So static route is a kind of routing, a static method to implement the routing. So that static route is just provide communication from one point to another point. Once that channel is established through the static route, you are writing ping and then destination IP. So that ping packet is carried through TCP IP protocol. Clear now? Yeah, that makes sense. Now, routing protocol. So routing protocol are basically categorized into two categories. One is IGP and one is EGP. IGP is Interior Gateway Protocol Exterior Gateway Protocol
how many branches you have uh, like your company how many branches you have well we have about we're buildings so then we have multiple networks in our building not in one city let's say uh, you have only one branch or you have different different branches in different cities different countries no we have different cities and countries but they're still separated uh, okay so let's say Kurt, can you step in i don't know how to explain we're nasa so okay so let's say this is the one city okay no one city within a city let's say within a building you have multiple ip subnet so inside the site inside you can run any igp protocol you can run any igp protocol this is let's say city a city b within a site you can run igp protocol for easy administration now next task is we have to connect these two ct site two branches so this egp protocol come into the picture now clear the difference to connect two branches in different city we are using egp protocol any question here so igp work within site or egp work between sites or as number as number is known as autonomous system number any confusion here yes daniel great any confusion here no it's pretty straightforward So firstly, we'll discuss about IGP protocol. Then we'll discuss about EGP. So further, this IGP protocol categorized into three category. One is distance vector. Link state. hybrid distance vector protocol select best path by checking hop count lower the hop count route will be more reliable now hope counts are routers between source to destination in this we have one protocol which is known as rip so example is here rip link state protocol select best path by bandwidth higher the bandwidth lower will be the cost and 
lower cost route will be more reliable. Here we have example of OSPF and ISIS. These are the two protocol under this category. OSPF is open shortest path first. ISIS is intermediate system to intermediate system. Hybrid protocol. Uh, both the characteristics of distance vector as well as link state. In this category, we have one protocol which is EIGRP. So we have to discuss about RIP, OSPF and EIGRP. These three protocol, ISIS is not including in our course. Clear this thing? In dynamic routing, there is one thing, administrative distance. administrative distance this option will come into the picture when you have multiple when you run multiple routing protocol on one router then how that router will elect okay which protocol is the best protocol so based on distance this administrative distance so administrative distance provide trustworthiness of a route, how much a route is reliable, lesser the administrative distance, also known as ED value, lesser the administrative distance, route will be more reliable. AD value range 0 to 255. 0 is directly connected and 255 is unknown. Every protocol is having a predefined administrative distance. If you want to change, you can change it. So let's say a static or default route ad is one that's why if you see the output of show ip route in the static route you are getting a bracket then one oblique zero right that one represent this ad value if you have rip then ad value is 120 if you have ospf 110. If you have EIGRP, then 90 and 170. If you have ISIS, 115. If you have BGP protocol, then 20 and 200. These are the predefined administrative distance from Cisco. If you want to change, you can change it. So, okay how this ad value will come into the picture here is my source here is my destination so let us zoom On this network, I configure RIP.
and here I configure OSPF. Means I can reach from this source to this destination via both the protocol RIP and OSPF. So now when this user, let's say there is a user who's sending traffic here. So now when the user is sending traffic, the traffic will reach to the router first. Now the router will check. Okay, RIP is also configured, OSPF is also configured. Then which protocol is the best? Which route is the best? Then how that router will elect? So firstly, it will check the AD value. So it will check, okay, AD value is on RIP, AD value is 120. OSPF is 110. So lesser the AD value, root will be more reliable. Yes, any confusion here? No. Okay, where is the confusion? No confusion. Okay. Yes, Daniel. Craig. Let's move the next thing. Yes, so this is the administrative distance. We can change this default value. I will show you when we are discussing the particular protocol. AS number. Autonomous system number. Logical grouping of IP subnets. Logical grouping of IP subnet under a single administrator control. Or administrative control. Now, EIGRP and BGP protocol use AS number. So it's like that. If you have a branch, in that branch you have, let's say, 100 IP subnet. And if you are configuring EIGRP, then it is recommended inside a site, inside a branch, if you are using EIGRP, in that case, use the same AS number on all the routers for the easy administration. If you are using different AS number means on some router you are using different AS, some router you are using different AS. We can communicate, but we need a third person. For example, uh, there are two person who is speaking the different language. They are unable to understand each other. So what we require, we require a translator. So who can translate both the language. So same way, if we have different AS number, in that case, we need a translator. And that translator is known as here, redistribution process. So I will explain that thing when we are doing the lab. like this if you are configuring EIGRP so let's say you are configuring AS100 so on both the router, on all three router, you have to configure AS100 for easy administration. 
if the as number is different in that case we have to do redistribution we'll discuss that thing later now great routing information protocol it is a pure distance vector protocol it select best part by hope form lesser the hope count root will be more reliable hope count are routers between source to destination rip is open standard protocol open standard protocol means it will work on all the routers all the vendors rip work on udp port number 520 rip have two version rip version 1 and rip version 2 rip maximum hope 15 rip maximum hope 15 means if your destination is on 16th router through rip you cannot communicate so rip limitation is maximum hope 15 so as i discuss rip is having two version so what are the difference between them rip version 1 rip version 2 rip version 1 support class full network remember class full network what is the class full network in ip addressing we discuss this thing classful classless network if an ip have default subnet mask with respect to the class that ip is known as classful for example 10.10.5 sorry 10.0.0.5 and if i am using 255.0.0.0 that ip is classful next rip version 1 send routing update on broadcast address to 55.255.255.255 rip version 1 doesn't support authentication the 
doesn't support root summarization. Doesn't support. discontinuous network so these are the limitation into the version 1 version 2 support classless network send routing update on multicast address to to four dot zero dot zero dot nine. It support authentication. It support root summarization. It support this continuous network. So these are some differences between Rift version one and version two. Default nature of RIP. In the default behavior of the RIP, in default behavior it can send version 1 it can receive version 1 in default behavior it cannot send version 2 but can receive version 1 this is the default behavior rip timer so in the rip we have update invalid hold down and flush update is 30 second invalid 180 second hold down 180 second flush is 240 second now let understand these timers okay so firstly understand how this routing default routing work sorry rip routing work or any dynamic routing work so firstly when you configure rip when you configure rip in this network then both the router will start sending update packet to each other so in that update they will exchange the directly connected information so r1 and r2 so on r1 there is a 10 and 
22 so r1 will send this information to r2 r2 send this information to r1 so when they exchange this routing through update packet let's say on r1 on r1 when uh, on r1 when receive the update from r2 it will check the routing table so in the routing table it will get to know okay network 10 is directly connected with me 12 is directly connected with me i don't have any information about 20 and 22 so i will put these two network in my routing table so same way network 10 will be in r2 so they will update the routing table based on the update packet and that update packet will send periodically in every 30 second just to make sure everything is updated in my table so now let's say everything is working fine in this network after some time this 22 network goes down now r2 is sending update to r1 in next 30 second that 22 is not coming but through the previous packet this 22 information i have so what will happen i will wait till 180 second if i am not receiving any information about 22 i will tell this route is invalid but if a route is invalid that not mean it will remove from the routing table no once a route is invalid the hold down timer will start so hold down timer means a route is invalid but it can stay into the routing table now flush if 240 second expire in that case that route will be flushed from the routing table after 240 second Yes. Any question here regarding the timer, regarding the process? None. Here. Okay. How to configure RIP? So to configure RIP, you have to define router space RIP. Inside that, define network and directly connected network. Let's say ten dot zero dot zero, and then network twelve dot zero dot zero. If you are on R two, same way. Router RIP network twelve dot zero dot zero network twenty dot zero network twenty two network zero. Okay. If you see in the configuration, I haven't defined any version. so in the default condition it will behave like a default so in the default it can receive version 1 and version 2 packet but can send only version 1 packet so if you define let's say if you want to define version so inside this you have to define version and which version you want let's say version 2 and exit if you are changing the version on one router it is recommended to change on all the routers and in the production environment 
it is recommended to use version 2 clear this thing any confusion in the configuration task so regarding this routing protocol there are two discovery discovery number 26 and 27 so try to complete those two discoveries i'm sorry which two numbers 26 27 so firstly 26 and 27 yes firstly do 26 
Which lab do you want me to do? 26, 26. 26. Hang on a second, I just got an error. Any router you said? Yeah, any router. I just want to show you the output. What is the meaning of output? Show IP route here. Show IP route. Oh, sorry. No, you haven't configured RIP here right now. Uh, I yeah, I did. Was on R2 that I did it then? Okay. Did I even listed the rip routes and added the one on eight. If you configure rip, in that case, that particular router will receive the root with capital R. No, rip is not configured here. Once configure rip between two routers, any two routers. Say again? Configure rip between any two routers. From the beginning, beginning, from the beginning, step one. No, I understand that. What I, I'm trying to say is I sit here and I got to this point and I saw this, this right here. So I know for a fact that I did it. Okay, okay. not an issue. You just show me the output. That's it. Show I, show I peer out. Uh, okay. Here. Yeah. If you see this step number two in show IP routes, you are receiving some route with the capital R. So capital R means the RIP route. So firstly, you are getting the destination. Then 120. This 120 is what? Your AD value. Slash one, slash one min hope count. And via that will be the gateway. Go down somewhere they run the command show IP protocol. Check the command is there, show IP protocol. Have they run this command? You will not get the output because you haven't run rip here on R1 right now. That's why you are not getting the output. But check in this PDF. Have they run this show IP protocol command? If you shut down the thing, does it not save it? No, once you configure everything, then you have to run copy run start. You have to save the configuration. Then only oh, you well, save. okay. Yeah, I closed out of it. I didn't want the time running while I was waiting on you. Okay, okay. I mean, I can redo it real quick if you want me to. Yeah, I'll just do one thing once. Okay. okay. Sorry, with the timer counting down and... Yeah, I had all these up. Yeah, let me know you check my work so I can leave it up.
again you will not get output because you have to configure on another router also r2 and r3 then only you will receive the root you have to configure on r2 and r3 Okay, so you are receiving capital R roots. Now run here show IP protocol. Now. Uh, see the output. Distance is one twenty. You okay? So routing protocol is configured RIP. See the timer. Update timer is thirty second. Yeah, then I change. I change this to 60 seconds, like it asked. Okay. So this was 30 seconds here. They had me change to 60 seconds. I put in this right here to make it go to 60 seconds. I'm a little confused why, why you have to type out 180 See, 180 is the invalid timer, but it is not recommended to increase the timer. Why? The reason is, the first is update timer. Then next one is invalid, third one is hold down, and fourth one is the flush timer. What is the last one? I'm sorry. Flush timer, flush. Oh, flush, okay. If you increase the timer, that means that router will send update after that second means previously the update timer is 30 seconds now right. we change to 60 seconds right so rip is having one property it will not send immediate update so let's say you just receive a update from r2 once you receive update something happened to that router one new network added or one network removed so it will take next 60 seconds to update that information to the R1. Okay, so that means you will not receive the next update until the next update. Right. So always don't change the timer. Right. So this lab is done. Show IP protocol be done. Show IP route be done. Okay. Did you want to redo this? Not issue. Okay. okay. Here they are using this thing. Go up, up, up. Huh. Here they are using this command interface loopback zero. What is the meaning of this thing? The meaning is right now, uh, like uh, yesterday, we make a topology. In that, we configure IP address on fast Ethernet and serial interface. Remember? Yes. Those are physical interfaces which are present on the router. 
sometime just for lab practice if we don't have that much interfaces so what we can do we can create the virtual interfaces that virtual interfaces will behave like a physical interface so they are creating a virtual interface interface loopback 0 and they are assigning the ip address to that loopback interface clear this thing it's a virtual interface and it will behave just a physical one so the loop just is, uh, so the loopback interface is basically to give you something to to use yeah so it just to increase the network that's it understood okay so this is rip so further further down here they're basically talking about doing away with the stuff that's not speaking rip which is r3 Okay, hold on now. They are using one passive interface command. Now, what is the passive interface? Let me explain. Okay, just go down, down. Let me see all the configuration. If something is pending, then I will explain. One is the passive interface. Go down. Okay, hold on. Generate a default route. Okay. Done. Go down. Okay. Just stop sharing. Let me explain those two things. I'm going to close out of the lab. Is that okay? Yeah. Not an issue. on r1 and r2 here you configure rip which is working fine now this is the isp router and through isp you are connecting to the internet as i already already told you through the isp we always use default route so on r1 you create a default route to reach the isp clear inside your network you are using rip and here you with the isp you are using default route so let's say this r2 want to communicate to the internet it want to go outside so this router need this route if that r2 is not having this default information default route information then the traffic will not move to the isp so just to advertise that thing default route in so just to advertise that default route default information originate you have to run this command so you have to run this command on r1 so this default route will come to the r1 and through r1 it will reach to r2 so this is default information originate command this command is used to originate a default route or you can say to flood the default route into the rip network
clear this thing any confusion here now that's pretty straightforward you got to tell it where it goes to yeah next thing is passive interface Now, passive interface, let's say we have this scenario, R1 is connected to R2 and R3. Let us assume we have this type of network, 10, 20, We have these networks. Let's say you configure RIP in this network. You configure RIP. So once you configure RIP, every router will send update packet to each other, correct? In that update packet, they will exchange the routing information. So let's consider this network 10 and 30. So in the R1, you will receive this 30 update, this 30 network via R2 as well R1. And same way, once you receive the update from both the path, it will check the hope count. So it will find out this route is the best route because of the lower hope count. So it will put this route into the routing table. But it'll, it'll check it via what? Hope count, hope count. Oh, hop count, got it, okay. No. So it will put this route into the routing table. But R3 is continuously sending update packet on this path in every 30 seconds, right? And this router is sending network 10 information to this way and this way. So if I'm sending same information on multiple path and this router is receiving that information only this path, then why I am sending this on this path, on R2 way? If I'm sending it is consuming my some amount of bandwidth, right? Every packet will consume some amount of bandwidth. So what we can do, we can define this interface as a passive interface. So once you define the passive interface, what will happen, it will stop sending update to this direction. So update will not go to this direction, only into this direction. Clear this thing, but it can receive the update. It will not send just to consume the bandwidth. So you have to use passive interface on that router where you have limited memory resource. Getting my point? But is there any benefit to keeping it a non-passive interface? Because if something happened to, no, I guess let, let assume this R1 is a older router, which is having very less amount of RAM. Okay. And very less bandwidth. So whenever it is sending update, it will send update on this direction and this direction. When, let's say if I consider 0 by 1 and 0 by 0. So when this router R1 will send the update packet, it will send update to R, both the interfaces, correct? That's correct. This R3 will receive this network 10 information only through this path because of the lower hope count value. So if I'm sending that information to this upper path, that is the useless information. 
and if my update packet is traveling on this link then it is consuming my bandwidth so just to reduce that consumption of the bandwidth what we can do we can define that interface as a passive interface so if that interface is a passive interface it can receive the information but the update packet will not travel on that interface clear now yeah that's clear but what if you added a fourth router what if it was an even number fourth router where i mean it wouldn't matter i understand three everything's passing through r1 here mm -hmm. for updates mm -hmm. there be any benefit of i mean clearly going through r2 to get to r3 is the long way around so making that a passive interface makes mm -hmm. sense but what if it's a square would okay. you make one side so if you had r1 r2 r3 and r4 this way yeah and r1 is there hold on hold on r3 r4 let's say we consider this thing as a network 10 and 40 clear this thing yeah so no. what if would you make the route going around okay. r or r2 to get to r4 passive or would you have a direct route between the r1 and r4 so we have to see whenever we have this type of connectivity rip walk hope count okay so in this type of scenario hope count is equal on both the path hope count is equal if hope count is equal then load balance load balancing happen equal cost load balancing means half of the data will go into in this direction half of the data will go into in this direction in equal cost load balancing now the question is now which interface we have to make passive so you have to check on which interface i am having the higher bandwidth so make that interface as a non passive interface because if the in, uh, bandwidth is more then my data will go smoothly clear this point yeah i understand but all things being equal then you just have to make a decision on where you wanted to put your passive interface right right so passive interface is just to reduce the wastage of bandwidth it is not selecting the best path so best path is selecting with the help of hope count only it is just preventing your bandwidth congestion that's it understood okay but at some point you would have to make a manual decision right okay next e i g r t Okay, we have to do how, long, yeah. how long is this going to be? Um, it's 1.15 here. I'd like to take lunch. Okay, take lunch because if it starts, then it take approximate one more hour. Let's take a lunch break now. 45 minutes again? Sure. Kirk, you good with that? Great. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, 45 minutes. Daniel, are you there? Quick. Yeah, I'm back. Kirk is here. Now, so next topic is EIGRP. So if we see the uh, issues in the RIF, so first issue is RIF support maximum hope count 15. So that means if 
the destination is on my 16th router or 20th router in that case through rip we cannot communicate first problem second problem is in rip update is going periodically periodically means in every 30 second or in every if you change the timer 60 second so it will go to the 60 second these are some problem into the rip so they modify something they add some link state property to the distance vector protocol and they make a new protocol which is eigrp eigrp is enhanced interior gateway routing protocol eigrp is hybrid protocol hybrid protocol means it is having both the characteristics of the distance vector as well as the link state property eigrp is cisco proprietary this protocol will work only on the cisco routers and switches eigrp support class less network if it support class less network then support vlsm and cidr next support md5 authentication it support md5 authentication there are two type of authentication either you can put plain text authentication or you can implement the md5 authentication ajrp sand routing update on multicast address 224.0.0.10 ajrp use ajrp use dual algorithm dual is diffusing update algorithm ajrp send partial update like in the rip whenever rip send the update it will send the complete routing table whereas eigrp send only the updated information ajrp send triggered update means whenever there is a change the change will update immediately it will not wait for 30 second or 60 second
AJRP use hello packet to form neighborship. Once you configure AJRP on the router, the router will start sending hello packet to each other. There are certain parameter into the hello packet which must be matched to form the neighborship. Hello on point to point link. Five second. Point to point means the two routers are directly connected. Hello on WAN. 60 seconds. Hold down on point to point. Hold down timer or point to point. 15 seconds. Hold down on van. 180 seconds. Any issue in that? Any property which you want? Some more clarity. EIGRP metric depend on bandwidth load delay reliability and MTU. Maximum transmission unit. AJRP metric. T1 into the bandwidth plus K3 into the delay multiplied by 256. This K1 and K2, K3. AIJRP key values. These key value also known as EIGRP weight. So in EIGRP there are K1, K2, K3, K4, K5. So by default K1 is 1, K2 is 0. K3 is 1, K4 is 0, K5 is 0. The IJRP metric formula is a big formula. I just write the short form. Because in the metric calculation, only the bandwidth and delay will take part. So that's why this is the formula. EIGRP tables. So once you configure EIGRP between two routers, EIGRP will make three tables. First table is EIGRP neighbor table. In EIGRP neighbor table, you will get the directly connected neighbor information. EIGRP topology table. In topology table, you will get all the root information. All possible root information. All possible root information means if there is a destination which you can reach through two or three paths. 
so whole path will be into the topology table third one routing table in routing table you will get only the best route so if in my topology table there are three paths to reach a particular destination so ehrp will calculate and whatever is the best path that best path will go to the routing table any confusion here any question next ehrp use as number autonomous system number let's on r1 and r2 you configure eigrp 100 so firstly they will make the neighborship neighborship parameters so once you configure eigrp on r1 and r2 they will exchange hello packet based on that hello packet they will make the neighborship in that hello packet same authentication type and password these five parameter must be match on both the router to form eigrp neighborship any confusion here i'm sorry <clears throat> can you explain hold down time okay hold down time let's say you configure eigrp here as i told you they are sending hello packet to each other in every 5 second right so firstly they will send the hello packet they form the neighborship let's say neighborship is done
now after some time i am unable to receive the update packet i am unable to receive hello packet so from r1 i am not receiving hello packet but i am sending hello packet so how much time i will wait so i will wait maximum 15 second if within 15 second i am not receiving hello packet so i will break neighborship clear this thing any confusion now no it's 15 second sure typical hold down time right if you want to change you can change it but make sure whenever you are changing the time there is a relationship between hello and hold down timer hold down timer must be three time of your hello so if you are changing hello timer then you have to change the hold down timer also can you put that right there on your notes sorry can you write that little stat on your notes that it has to be three times okay sure okay clear now yeah so i don't forget sure I guess I should rephrase that. I'm going to forget. That's why I need it written down. Not issue. Okay. Next thing is dual algorithm. dual algorithm in dual algorithm there are four things one is successor feasible successor Successor is the best route. Feasible successor, alternate best route. After successor, but it is not mandatory. Every time feasible successor will create. to become a root as a feasible successor that root must meet a feasible successor condition to become a root as feasible successor that root must meet feasible successor condition feasible successor condition now what is that feasible successor condition ad of here ad means advertise distance ad of feasible successor 
must be less than fd feasible distance must be less than fd of current success allowed if a root is meeting with this condition then the root would can be a feasible successor otherwise no ejrp support on equal post load balance remember this point eigrp is the only protocol who support unequal post load balancing okay so it's like this way here is my destination here is my source now we have two path so whatever path is there let's say here my speed is 100 100 mbps here my bandwidth is 10 mbps 10 mbps to 10 mbps so this route will become the successor so it will check like okay that lower root can be a feasible successor or not so if it is a feasible successor that root must meet this condition otherwise that root will be not a feasible successor clear this thing any question here what is ad and fd that we have to discuss next yeah mix next is ed advertise distance cost from next hop router to destination fd feasible distance cost from local router to next hop plus and next hop to destination clear this thing now let me explain these two terms cost you mean total the cost is uh, the metric value basically the mac address what metric value metric oh. every protocol is having a uh, calculation to select the best path so that calculation is known as metric value for example if rip is there so rip metric is a hop count rip will select how many routers are there between source to the destination eigrp will check bandwidth in delay ospf will check only bandwidth
let's see here my bandwidth is 100 mbps 100 mbps 100 mbps 10 10 10 this 10 and 100 are basically the coast values, the metric values. Now, so once you configure EIGRP here, then all the routers will start calculation internally and they will select the best path. So higher the bandwidth, lower will be the cost and lower path cost route will be more reliable. So this route will become successor. It will calculate the lower path can be a feasible successor or not based on the feasible successor condition. If that route is matching to the feasible successor condition, that route will become the feasible successor, otherwise no. We'll take a separate example for feasible successor now. The next term is AD. AD is post from next hop router to the destination. So this is your AD. Clear this thing? FD, cost from local router to next hop router and next hop to the destination. So this is your FD. Any confusion here? No, makes sense. Another scenario. Let's say This 5, 10, I just took the random numbers. These are, let us assume, post on that particular link. So here is my source. Here is my destination. If you configure EIGRP here, then what will happen? This router C will check both the path via B and via D. So how the route will elect in EIGRP? Let's say if you are on C, you are on C, you have two paths. Either you can go via B and you can go via D. So there are two things, FD, AD and FD. AD and FD. So as I told you, AD is the cost from next hop router to the destination. Next hop is B. B to destination, AD is 10. FD total cost, C to B and B to A, 15. On another path, via D, 10, 10, 10, 30. And FD is 35. Clear this thing? So AD is cost from next hop router to the destination. FD is total cost from source to the destination. Now, firstly, router check FD value 
on multiple path lower fd root will be successor so tell me which root will be the successor here via b or via d via b via b so this root is successor so now router will see there is a successor so it will check that alternate root can be a feasible successor or not so there is a feasible successor condition now what is that condition ad of feasible successor ad of feasible successor must be less than fd of the current successor route so this 30 is not less than 15 so in that case not matching feasible successor condition so no feasible successor clear this point or not ad of feasible successor must be less than fd of the current successor route so it must be less than 15 if it is less than 15 then the root will be feasible successor let me show you in next diagram So that between B and E would have to be two or less, right, to be a feasible right. successor. Right. So let's say if we have this type of network. So in that case, again, we are on C. If we go via B, so A D and F D. So AD is five, FD is fifteen, and if you go via D, AD is fourteen, and FD is nineteen. So again, firstly, election is between FD. That will be successor. Now, feasible successor. ad of feasible successor must be less than 
एफ डी ओ करंट सक्सेसर राउट सो इफ यू सी एडीओ फिजिबल सक्सेसर मस्ट बी लेस देन एफ डी ओ द करंट सक्सेसर राउट कंडीशन मैच सो इन दिस रूट वाई आर डी कैन बी फिजिबल सक्सेसर क्लियर ना एंड फिजिबल सक्सेसर रूट विल बी इन टू द टोपोलॉजी टेबल फिजिबल सक्सेसर राउट विल बी इन टोपोलॉजी टेबल क्लियर दिस थिंग आर नॉट ना वट इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ फिजिबल सक्सेसर सो बेसिकली इफ यू हैव दैट फिजिबल सक्सेसर इज ए बैकअप पार्थ now let's say if this successor goes down in that case that feasible successor will become immediately successor if that root is not feasible successor so what will happen if your successor root goes down then the router will again start calculation who will be the next best root if the successor is feasible successor is not there but if the router knows who is the feasible successor and the successor goes down immediately that backup root will put into the routing table and that will become the successor so the convergence time will be less in case of if you have feasible successor any question till now So just to be sure I understand is there ever any manual input for this or is it all done internally in the router See if it is selecting automatically that will be good based on the metric value on the particular link what is the bandwidth on that link what is the delay on that link if automatically it is matching to the condition then the route will be automatically into the feasible table sorry into the topology table but if you want to make a route as a feasible successor manually you can do that task and that task can be done with the help of variance command there is a command variance okay we can do that task that not issue but that is not here into the ccna that is into the ccn well but there's really no reason to do that right if the, if it happens automatically behind the scenes mm -hmm. we can do manually that's not issue and that is depend on what is the bandwidth of the link what is the delay on that particular link next eigrp packet in eigrp we have five type of packet first is hello update during reply acknowledgement these are the five packets into the eigrp hello packet used to form neighborship update packet used to forward routing update 
Curry packet will travel only in win one situation if your best route goes down. Travel when best route goes down. Reply response to Curry packet. And acknowledgement is acknowledgement. Next. TIGRP configuration. The same way, let's say we have these two routers. And if you want to implement EIGRP, so as I told you, in case of EIGRP. AS number must be same. This 100 is the AS number. So how you will configure? Router EIGRP 100. Then same way network and the directly connected network. Let's say 10.0.0. Then same way If you are on R2, that 100 must match. This is the EIGRP configuration. If you want to verify, so you can run, firstly show IP EIGRP neighbor. Next command show IP EIGRP topology. Next command show IP route. Show IP protocols. Clear that thing or not? Any confusion into the configuration part? No, I think I'm good. Okay. So try to implement discovery number 40, 40. Number 40? Yeah. Speaking of so not a problem here. Okay, this is the basic uh, configuration here. Yeah. However, it's saying configuring this and it, it names it as branch and headquarters. The, uh -huh. the actual lab doesn't have it called that. So which one is which? Go down. Bro. Are we doing this? No, no, no. Go down. Here? Go down. Just show me the diagram. Where is the diagram? I got it right here. Hold on. <coughs> now show me that configuration. Down. 
down. Maybe that uh, PDF is not updated that thing. Okay, not an issue. Just show me the R1. Uh, show IP interface brief. Okay, hold on. Let me just see if I'm on. Show IP. Interface brief. IP interface brief. Show me the complete output. Just increase the size of this console. So here they assign this 10.1 and 10.11. Okay. Here, show IP protocol. Show me the running configuration. EIGRP is not running here. So do one thing, go to R1, go to config T. Router EIGRP 1. Router EIGRP. Router, you type route. Enter. Then define the network, network 10.0.0. Enter. What is all this underneath here then? That will come. That will come. Once you configure the AIGRP, that R1 will send the hello packet to the R2. Okay. So once you receive the hello packet, neighborship will form. That is the neighborship message, basically. Yes. Read the message. New agency form. New agency form means you found a new neighbor. Okay. Exit from there. They wanted to also do it on. Exit from exit from R one. Exit from there. Type here show IP EIGRP neighbors. Again. Show IP EIGRP neighbor. IP EIGRP neighbor. Show IP. EIGRP neighbors. EIGRP. Spelling mistake. EIGRP.
then 90 that 90 is the ad value and 90 slash whatever value you are getting that is the fd value clear this thing the what firstly what is the network this is the fd feasible distance oh okay fd got it if you want to see something more like now you can run the command show ip eigrp topology okay this is kilometers no 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 it's just a numeric numerical value it's not kilometer oh here there is no unit oh, okay. show ip eigrp topology you want me to type that yeah show ip eigrp topology So this is the topology table. So you can see successor is there and what is the FD value. Clear this thing or not? Yeah, that makes sense. Now show me that PDF. Go down. Down. So we check all these things. Show IP, IGRP topology. We seen that thing. Right. Okay. Hold on. If you want to change the router ID, so you can run the run this command EIGRP router ID and whatever router ID you want to give. Okay. So what is the use of router ID? Router ID is basically used. Let's say on the R2 router. Let's say there are four interfaces which are into EIGRP. So when the R2 is sending any update, so there will be a source IP address in that packet, in update packet. So what will be the source of that packet? So that source of that packet is the router ID. So by default, it takes the highest IP present on the router, that will be the router ID. But if you want to change manually, you can run this command, go to the router EIGRP and EIGRP router ID and the particular IP address. Clear? Yeah. Okay, go down. Okay, passive interface is the same thing. Show IP protocol, we discussed this thing. Yes, any issue in this? No. Correct. Any issue in EIGRP? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So I sent you one file, this CCNA EIGRP sim question dot TKT. Have you received this thing? Uh, yes, but I haven't opened it yet. Okay. So try to open this thing in Cisco Packet Tracer. Download this thing and try to open in Cisco Packet Tracer. We good to shut down this uh, lab? No, uh, you can just close this lab. Okay, exit from that particular lab. So time will stop. So once again, in OSPF, OSPF is an open standard protocol. They have these three characteristics. Every link state protocol have three characteristics. They send the partial update, means they will send only the updated information. Trigger update, 
they will send immediately whenever there is a change into the network they will send immediately that update they send the topology refreshment in every 30 minute just to make sure whatever database they have that database is the updated so they will flush the database in every 30 minute ospf is a uh, ospf support the classless network support the vlsm and cidr okay ospf use area id we'll discuss that how many type of area we have ospf use stf algorithm shortest path first algorithm next point ospf use these two multicast addresses 224.0.0.5 and 224.0.6 so remember these multicast ip addresses these are fixed for every protocol so rip is having 224.0.9 EIGRP is having 224.0.10, OSPF is having 224.0.5 and 6. Then we discuss about the hello and hold down timer. then there will be three kind of database in ospf adjacency database which is known as neighbor table link state database which is known as the topology table and forwarding database is your routing table last one is this ospf terminology back one area area 0 will be always back one area and if you are creating ospf network in that case area 0 must mandatory all area must be directly or indirectly connected with area 0 abr area border router is that router which connect to or more ospf area asbr autonomous system border router is that router which connect ospf with another protocol virtual link used to create a indirect connectivity between area 0 and that area which is not directly connected with area 0 and virtual link is always abr to abr after that ospf area so area backbone area and regular or you can say normal area backbone area is area 0 rest of all area apart from area 0 all area are regular area ospf area configuration when you configure ospf you can configure ospf either single area or multiple area now single area means all the routers are in a single area for example multiple area
some routers are under area 0 some routers are in area 1 10 like this any confusion here Okay. Fuse. Wild card masking. When you configure OSPF, OSPF use the wild card mask. Now, what is the wild card mask? Let's say. My subnet mask is two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. wild card mask is the inverse of subnet mask so let's say wild card so whatever subnet mask you have whatever subnet mask you have subtract from the full octet and you will get the wild card mask clear this thing an issue subtract what subtract from the full octet this is the full octet na 255.255.255.255 okay understood Hey, do me a favor. Well, save it again. But can you out to the right of the two five five two five five two five five two five five, write what you called it? Full octet. And this is your subnet mask. And now you are getting the wild card mask. Clear now. Yes, sorry. I'm just I'm very visual. Now OSPF configuration. Let's say first thing OSPF configuration in single area. router ospf 1 this one is the process id and that process id is locally significant on the router router after that network and the directly connected network let's say 10 network after that you have to write the subnet wild card masking then area and area id let's say both the router are under area 0 then network let's say 12 
area space zero. On R two, same thing. If you want to verify, you can run with show IP protocol. Show IP host PF neighbor. Show IP host PF database. Show IP route. Any confusion into the configuration? Show IP what? A oh, route. Route. Any issue in the configuration? OSPF in multi area. So let us assume So if you want to configure OSPF into multiple area, what will be the configuration? Configuration will be exactly same. You have to just change the area ID. For example, router OSPF one, you can define network.
Wouldn't router two have to have uh, the dot two three as well? Yeah, 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 I'm writing that. That will be the configuration. Any issue in this? Hang on before you leave. Sorry? I said I'm, I'm, I'm still mapping out what you wrote here. So let's move to the next topic. An issue in the configuration? No. Those be a packet. Thing like EIGRP, we have five type of packet here. So one is hello, DVD, LSR, LSU, LSF. In case of OSPF, any update is known as LSA, link state advertisement. DVD database description used to send routing update. LSR link state request. Request for specific update. LSU link state update. Response of LSR. And this is LS. Link state acknowledgement. Clear this thing. It's clear or need some more clarification.
Daniel Craig. No, I understand what you're what you're telling us. I did not know that before. Then no. Next thing is OSPF in multi-access network. So OSPF in multi-access network means the routers are configured or connected with Ethernet network or connected with a switch. So for example, Is the network is ten. Let us assume it is configured with area zero. So now, in multi-access network, so let's say if I configure OSPF in R one, R two, and R three, R five. So tell me. If I'm on R1, how many neighbors I will get? On R1, how many neighbors are there? If I run show IP, show IP OSPF neighbor. Well, sorry, can you repeat that question? If I configure OSPF in all five routers. Then how many neighbors are there on R1? Three. Three. Yes. Correct. How many neighbors are there? Well, it would be. It would be four, wouldn't it? Right. Four. Because we have five routers, right? So there will be four oh, okay, okay. neighbors. So every router will have four neighbor. Every router, correct? And only routers are considered neighbors. Right. Because it's a switch. Switch is a transparent device. So the switch will just provide a connectivity. So let us assume. On R1, there is a update. Update means something happened on R1. Maybe network 10 is added. So what R1 will do? R1 will send this copy to all the neighbors. Clear? Any confusion on this first point? Now, when R2 receive this packet, R2 will send this packet to their own neighbor. Then, R3 will perform the same task. So the point is. Every router will start sending the same packet to each other because all routers are neighbor with each other. Correct this thing. Can you give me a few examples of update? Update means any maybe on that router there are network ten is there. If that network goes down, if that network is down, in that case R one will send that update to all the routers, right? Update means any incident happen on the R1. Okay. Clear now? Okay. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to ask one more time. But you mean configuration changes? Right, any configuration changes. Not update as in like firmware or anything of that nature? No, no not that update. Firmware update, no. Any configuration changes happen. Maybe the link goes down. After R1, maybe there is a R6 connected. And let's say that link goes down. So that information R1 will update to all the neighbors. Six is not there now. So that thing I'm telling as update. Clear? Yes. So this can create unnecessary traffic into the O space network. So just to avoid that thing in multi-access network, they came up with a solution and that solution is DR and BDR. So now what is DR and BDR? And OSPF multi access network DR and BDR elect. Now, what is DR and BDR? Firstly, update, go to DR, designated router, and BDR, backup, designated router dr is responsible to update that route update that information rest of router in that area. BDR just keep that update. If DR goes down BDR will be DR. Clear these three points. I'm sorry, in your first in your first note, in OSPF multi-access network DR, BDR, what's that word right there? Elect. That's a DR BDR create. DR BDR create. Firstly, the update goes to the DR and BDR router. DR is responsible to update that information to the rest of the router in that area. BDR just keep the root. If DR goes down, then BDR will become the DR. So like this, if there is an update on this router, this update, that update will firstly go to the BDR and DR and BDR. Now, this DR is responsible to update that information to the rest of the area, routers. So in that case, only one copy is traveling and only DR is sending that copy because DR knows, okay, who are the neighbors? Clear this thing?
so now my next point is how to elect who is the dr and bdr what is the dr bdr election process highest was the interface priority the router which is having the highest ospf interface priority that router will be the dr by default interface priority as 1 you can increase that thing so if you want to increase what you have to do you have to go to the interface let's say on r1 config go to the interface whatever interface is that 0 by 0 ip ospf priority let's say 50 this one second highest loop back ip router will be dr third one highest physical ip router will be dr that's why in previous slide i write r5 is a dr because that r5 is having 10.0.0.5 highest ip address clear this thing Yeah. OSPF states. In OSPF, we have seven states. Down. N. Next start. Next change. Loading and full. These are the seven states. down in down state hello then waiting for hello so let's say there are two routers r1 and r2 so r1 you can figure first r1 as a router was here then r1 will send hello and now it is waiting for the response of hello from the neighbor so the router will be in down state hello receive in init state if you receive the hello your router will change the state down to init two way hello parameter match
neighborship form so in two way state neighborship is form x start state dr bdr elect exchange dvd packet exchange dvd packet exchange means they are exchanging the routing table database load dvd packet information and pull routing table synchronized clear this thing any question here so so i'm sitting here and you're going through the states and i'm trying to find that in the e-reader it's not into the e-reader so the only reference of this will be your notes that you're taking here see i'm just telling you the technology see i'm not following the book so whatever is the entire technology i'm teaching that thing so ultimately whatever i am teaching here everything will be in your book if that is not into the book that is the additional thing for you what's the last thing you said is that that's the what for me sorry no i'm saying if it's not in the book then what that is the additional information oh okay gotcha there there is a on 372 in the book it talks yeah. about ospf neighbor states Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Is that the same thing? Rakesh? Rakesh? Yeah, same thing. Okay. No. This thing is clear? Yes. Okay. Now, let's do the lab. So, post the lab is discovery number 43 and 44 so try to complete these two labs discovery number 43 and 
Hey, Rakesh. Yes. So I'm going to, can you stop sharing for a second? Okay, so this information right here is stuff that we're supposed to know off of. That process ID is any numeric number. Let's say here I'm taking one. You can take any number. Okay. That router process ID is locally significant on the router. So go to the config key. That network, let's say in my case, I'm using uh, 10.0.0.0, then the wildcard mask, and then area ID. It's a syntax. Okay, so it's made up stuff at this point. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. I'm completely hung up. I tried to make up a number, but I guess it's not, I'm getting invalid input. You are running this command into the privilege mode. You have to run this command into the configuration. Uh, okay. Sorry. I think, uh, you need to take five minute break, I think so. Okay. Type config key.
firstly share me the topology where is the diagram okay so this is the activity number 1 uh, let's say single area configuration right so where i was confused is is i was under the impression that like earlier when i was pointing this out to you that we were having to do this because it's a task but it's not i needed to go down here and start here so hold on hold on hold on on r2 okay just go down now i am i am down here now i am where am i i am right I'm right here. Okay. Uh, okay, not issue. You just type here on R1. Okay, leave that PDF uh, here only. That R1 configuration. On R1, type a command show IP protocol. Now I understand this now. I just have finished it because I was confused in the beginning. Okay. I just ran this right here. Okay. So this command is used to check on which interface you configure OSPF and show IP OSPF neighbor. This command is displaying how many neighbors you have. So if you run here, show IP OSPF neighbor, you will get R2 is your neighbor. Yes, I understand that. So the uh, route which is coming from O, those are OSPF route, and these are O means intra-area route means those routes are coming from the same area. If some routes are coming from another area, you will get here O I A intra-area routes, and you can see the route which start from O, you are getting the uh, AD value 110. And slash 11, 11 is the cost value. Okay, just hold on. In this topology, they are showing you. Let's say uh, there is a source on A and the destination on C. In the default condition, OSPF support four equal path. So if the bandwidth is same on every link, then equal cost load balancing will happen. But according to this scenario, there are some different cost values on the link. So when you are traveling source to destination then r1 then router a will select on which path i am getting the lower cost value so lower cost value will be in the lower path a d and c so 
so that route will be more preferred let's say if there is a situation you have to forward the data through b then you can change the post value so to change the post there is a command into the interface they are telling show ip ospf post and whatever post value you want to give there
Guys, don't let me hold you up. We need to move on. Move on. I can come back and do these. So this passive interface default command is breaking your neighborship. And when you are implementing no passive interface Ethernet zero by one, on that particular interface, they are disabling the passive interface. So the so the interface which is connected through this zero by one, that neighborship will be up. Kirk, are you done with both labs? Yes, I am. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Rakesh, go ahead and move on. So stop your sharing. Next, I'm going to discuss one small topic. That will be the last topic for the day. DHCP. Now, what is DHCP? Dynamic post. configuration protocol DHCP is used to assign IP address to client automatically DHCP work on UDP port number 6768. So now, how DHCP works? Let us assume this PC is the DHCP server and this is client. This client is not having any IP address. So what will happen? So in step one, client send DHCP discover packet. So client send DHCP discovery packet to the network. And this is the broadcast packet. Server receive this DHCP discovery packet and server send DHCP offer to client. And DHCP send a DHCP offer packet to the client. Once 
client receives this dhcp offer packet client send dhcp request to server server send dhcp app to client and assign ip to client this process is known as dora process dora discover offer request acknowledgement so now how to configure dhcp on router Let's say this R one is my DHCP. So on R one, your first command is service space DHCP. This command will enable the DHCP service on the device. Right now, most of the router, uh, this command is by default enabled. ip dhcp pool and the name of the pool is let's say abc inside that you have to define the network which network you want to deploy into the client so let's say 10.0.0.0 and the subnet mask the next command is default router so default router is when the client will get the ip address what will be the default gateway so the default gateway will be let's say 10.0.0.1 whatever ip address present on the router interface ip then let's say dns server 10.0.0.2 if you want to define domain name you can define domain name if you want to define lease let's say 10 10 10 ten. 10 days 10 hours 10 minute if you want to exclude some ip addresses so you can run this command ip space dhcp excluded address then 10.0.0.12 let's say 10.0.0.10 so let's say if you want to reserve some ip address for the servers so you have to exclude those ip addresses so client will get ip address from the 
clear this thing yeah that makes sense so there is a discovery number 22 perform that discovery what was the last thing you said discovery number 22 discovery 22 right 22 on step okay all right so i got down here on step 10 mm -hmm. and i was on pc2 okay close server 1 but mm -hmm. my debugging is running i didn't get anything like this okay for this you have to run the command if you want to all these messages so that is on the server right which is right here what command uh, it tells you just to return to the console and review the sequence of debug messages so i the the debug has been has ran
was I supposed to leave this up while I was working on this to get that to work? No, no, no. Server verification is not required. Okay, because maybe on that server they are running internally some packet capturing tool. For example, like Wireshark and other tool. So here they are not giving that information, and that information, uh, whatever output they are showing here, that will be on the first time when the client is sending the request. But let's say if the client already get the IP address, then these messages will not get. So check here on the PC number two. Check show IP interface brief on PC two. Show IP interface brief. This is getting the IP address. Okay, do one thing. Go to server, server, and run here show version. Okay. Uh, press space bar. Now go to the PC number two. And run. Now go to the config T. Ethernet zero by interface. Ethernet zero by zero. Say that again a little bit slower. Interface Ethernet zero by zero. Ethernet, Ethernet, not internet. Zero by zero. Okay. Type here. Uh, no IP address. IP space address. No space. No. IP space address. Enter. You can see message started on the server. Clear now. Again, type IP address DHCP. It's not clear. It's not clear what you did to get this to work. I mean, other than uh, previously, why you are not getting the messages? Because PC number two already received the IP address. You will receive the message on the server in that case when the client is sending the request or client is removing the IP address. So client send the request no IP no IP address. So that IP is removed from that client. So again, if you press IP address DHCP, type here on PC number two IP space address space DHCP. Enter. So see again, some messages will start on the server. Okay, that that makes sense. But what I'm what I'm trying to figure out is while I'm doing the lab, mm -hmm. was it because I did not have this up? Yes. Okay, that's that's all I needed to know. I, I had already I knew I had done the everything correct. I was trying to figure out why when I got to here, it does not tell you to leave server one up. It tells you to leave server one and go here. That was all I was simply trying to say. Yeah, out. Daniel, if you left the server window up, it would have populated with all the the back and forth as far yes. as releasing the DHCP. Okay. So basically, if you leave server one up, it shows you what you're doing actively on PC2. It shows what the server is doing communication wise with PC2, yes. Okay, that's got it. I'm clear. I'm clear now. Okay, so these are the content for the day. So again, we'll continue tomorrow. Here, one more thing is pending in the DHCP, which is the DHCP relay agent, which I will explain tomorrow. What is the DHCP relay process and why we require that DHCP relay agent? Clear? Any question, Craig, till now?
No, if you could just send us the uh, PNG files. Aha. Just give me two minutes. Let me send that thing. So I will share on the chat box. So you will receive immediately. Okay. Hey Kirk, I talked to Paul. Win uh, Win Seven is safe to use for the uh, unzip. You mean the Seven Zip software? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I figured. I was going to download it. Okay. Because it's it, on the ETADS page. Right. It just wasn't listed under mine. The 1703. I had to go back a level to find it. Yes, have you received? Okay, download that thing. 